Hello everybody and welcome back to the next Transformers Studio Series video and in this video I will be reviewing Studio Series number 26 Deluxe Class World War 2 Bumblebee. Now um, before we start our review I'm going to tell you the contents of this video. We are going to do some comparison between the, the robot mode and vehicle modes. We're going to check out the backdrop and the box art. So without further ado let's start, let's start um, taking a look at Bumblebee's details. So right here we can see that um, we can see Bumblebee's head with the miniature Autobot logo right there on his forehead. We can see a lot of um, wiring and and um, paint applications that's applied to the mold and everything. We can see some um, hollow spots right here, but they're not really much of a problem. We can see that um, there are some silver paint applications around the grayish area, and his eyes are actually shaded in a very light blue. His um, cannon weapon accessory looks like it does in the movie, pretty accurate and everything. Uh, um, it even comes with tiny little details that come with it within like, like where the bullets come out and even the handle as well. Now taking a look at his other accessory which is actually a battle hammer. <clears throat> is the same battle hammer he does use when he is fighting Optimus Prime in the, at the end of the film. We can see that it is very detailed. Uh, it has a lot of um, it has a lot of ridges around. The paint applications are nice. It is actually um, a piece of plastic that is just gray. It just is um, a gray piece of stick, and then it has a joint right here that can go side to side, but it cannot go to this side. I think it's because this little circle joint is restrict this little um, slot is restricting it, but um, I'll explain later why that slot is important. Now back to Bumblebee, we, we can let's take a look at at the center of his body. At the center of his body is very um, detailed. We can see a lot of wiring to, to uh, around his belly area around his um, waist and everything we can see a lot of wiring um, his hat his arms do go upward they can go at least 180 degrees they cannot go um, in reverse only if you if only if you do them like that but um, the reason is because there's a lot of kibble on the back and everything that is kind of restricting and I'll explain later why I why, one reason why I do not like this this um, part of Bumblebee and I'll explain why he is not that much movie accurate at least the front ends but not the back I'll just explain later now taking a look at his legs they are incredibly movie accurate there we can see the tires right there we can see some molding some nice okay molding but I believe Hasbro could have done a better job we do see the number 10 right here the um I'm not so sure if it was implied on Bumblebee on his um in the movie I have to watch the movie again but I'm not so sure um if this was necessary or not and we do actually see a tiny little number 12 right here which is actually on his CGI box art um and I believe that is accurate there is some um one what some um like slight things around here like I think the molting is kind of wrong right here I feel like it should have been more bulky around the arms but everything is detailed even the hands are are very detailed and everything now uh, now I'll explain why um there's the this what this is what makes this figure not not so not so awesome now we can see that this thing this is like a backpack and um, we never saw it in the film we just we just saw like bumblebee like um just his body and everything we never saw where everything went and actually his alternate form isn't the one we saw in the film this is just like some ordinary world war ii tank and in the film we saw kind of a mixture of a buggy and a tank um but and um if I, I have found no way to remove this but if i did find a way i would remove it and then just place it back for display and everything but i personally i do not think that it's a great idea to have this as the wheels do um hop in the back on um, right here i believe this is just to cover the wheels and stuff but i feel like hasbro could have done a way better job with it with this part and could have made his alt mode very different as we see in the film he does turn into some sort of bug mixed with the world war ii tank like i said before but unfortunately Hasbro did not do that they went the lazy route and just gave him a backpack which made this figure a shell form now um all in all this figure is pretty good to have in your collection and everything I did uh, unfortunately get the buzzworthy version as I was actually looking for his regular studio series box but um it is actually the same figure and everything they're just re-releases but um 
the the mold and area, all the paint applications are the same as the previous figures and um, everything is good um, the only thing that is different between the buzzworthy and the regular studio series is that the buzzworthy does have a yellow box with some g1 bumblebee pictures on the front but other than that it is um pre pretty much um entirely different now um let's start our comparison so near, so here we have um, Studio Series 50 Hot Rod. Now, um, the reason I brought Hot Rod in is for the comparison is because they share the same iconic movie scene and they have uh, similar molds. Like everything on uh, on them is a similar mold, except that there are certain features that I'm going to show that that make make both figures pretty different from each other. So first, let's check um, with Bumblebee shoulders. You can see that Bumblebee's shoulders do have like some wiring and and gears and all that stuff, all those gizmos. And Heart Rod's shoulders are simply smooth and with some screws right there. Um, right here, um, um, Bumblebee's shoulders were actually way more um, detailed, and Heart Rod's were not. Another thing that um, another molding thing is that this part near the chest area. Um, is actually pretty pr um, pretty nice I know and and they are different because Bumblebee's chest area is more inverted where where it looks like he transformed it and everything tucked inside him and it looks like um Hot Rod is more like the engine is right here and everything although they both have the same um alt alt mode and they did and Hot Rod's um vehicle mode and Bumblebee's vehicle mode was when we never saw in the film that came with a toy and we did see be in a bug and we saw heart rod in some other type of car but i assure you that it was not um the, the alt mode that i that they do transform later on in the review also taking a look at the top we can see that the mold the molding and everything looks the same from the top except do well like their heads the color is different um i believe there is some slight re uh, slight molding on uh, uh, um, the thighs where bumblebees are and and heart rods as well I think there is some slight slight differences right there but, but other than that they have the same mold between the legs and everything but um, the only difference is the shoulders and the head so you'd be basically getting the same mold if you purchase both of these figures which I do recommend because they'll make your, your World War 2 scene complete now putting heart rod to the side and also, one other thing is that um, I never did show how to transform Heart Rod. Well, in this video, I'm showing how to transform Bum Bumblebee, and they actually transform the same amount of steps and the same way as well. And one thing that I did not state in my original review, I'm not so sure if I did, is that Heart Rod, the, the figure, the initial figure, came with one, one weapon accessory, one in his CGI boxer, and in the film, he came with two weapon accessories. Okay, so um, let's also um, attach these to Bumblebee for for more um, for some more um, for for uh, more more decoration on him and stuff. So just and one thing about Bumblebee's um, hammer is that is that right here it's kind of smooth and everything and lumpy and everything. And then we do see that this part on the end is is a little chubbier and this part as well and the then the rest parts are more sleek is because um his hand will go into the chubby part and not through the sleek part because if you do it is just gonna keep collapsing so that is why I do recommend putting it in the chubby part. Okay. So bringing in um um for our next comparison Studio Series 74 Deluxe Class Bumblebee now the reason I brought him is because um, um, Bumblebee and Bumblebee. I just wanted to share some things about um, the the height of these figures, because the height of this figure is the same as 41. If you do have 41 or 74, um, it uh, it doesn't matter. Um, it's the same height as 49. I meant 49, not 41. Um, and this version is the same height as 49. 74 and 49 are the same height and everything. So just for a quick comparison between both Bumblebees, I just wanted to show, um, demonstrate to you that that Bumblebee's head is slightly more more upward, and um, and if even if you um, push in um, World War II Bumblebees like like this, we can see um, that Bumblebee would passes um, um, 74 Bumblebee. By, by at least like maybe a few millimeters and stuff so that is um, just a quick comparison uh, of what I wanted to show you between this um, this version of Bumblebee and 
with that version of Bungaree. Well, now without further ado, let, let's compare him with Studio Series number 44, Later Class Optimus Prime. Although Later Class Optimus Prime is, um, is the size of Voyager Class, I just wanted to demonstrate to you the size between if you have Optimus Prime or a Voyager Class figure of how big this figure would be against a Voyager Class. Now we can see that, um, and that Bumblebee's head makes it toward Optimus Prime's chest plate, which or which is right here. It just makes it right there. Um, Optimus Prime way just passes him right there. We can see that this figure is actually um, at least five, four point five inches tall, and this figure is six point five inches tall. So there is a two um, inch difference, just to show you. But um. Another reason I also brought it is because that Optimus Prime and Bumblebee did fight in the film, but I am using Dark of the Moon Optimus Prime's version and not the Last Night version because unfortunately it has not been released yet. So I just brought brought Optimus Prime in for just a quick little comparison, and then now we'll get to our final comparison. Look at his box and then transform um, Bumblebee into his World War to alternate mode. Now, without further ado, our last comparison. And now for our last comparison, what comparison wouldn't have a transformer that is about the size of a leader class, and and also this transformer is the leader of the set of the Decepticons and enemy of the Autobots, Voyager class, Duty Series Thirty One, um, Battle Damaged Megatron. Now the reason I brought him, although Bumblebee and Megatron never encountered in the film, just once one 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 moment in um, the last night. The reason I brought it is because this version of Megatron is nearly the size as of a leader class. So I just wanted to show you um, how how um, this version of Bumblebee would look toward a leader class. So we can see that Bumblebee's head barely makes it between uh, me me between Megatron's legs right there. We we can see that um, the Megatron way passes him that he could just pick him up like that and then throw him. So um, that is just one little quick comparison I just wanted to show you of 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 Studio Series twenty six um, Deluxe Class Bumblebee and Studio Series thirty one Voyager Class Battle Damaged Megatron. Now, without further ado, let's let's get started at looking at the backdrop. And now, taking a look at his backdrop, we can see that his backdrop is the same backdrop we do get for Studio Series 50 Hot Rod. Now, um, the reason I'm showing the backdrop is to show you that like it's the same. They have the same backdrop and everything due to the iconic movie scene. And since this is a buzzworthy backdrop, I just wanted to um, show you some differences. Um, the only difference is the color, it does still have the Studio Series letter, and it does have 26, and it does add a little BB for Buzzworthy with it. And we do see the authentic Transformers logo, the regular Transformers logo, and right here we can see the name of the film, Transformers The Last Night. And um, taking a look at the art, I think it's pretty amazing, although I really wish they could have added some Nazi symbols right there, as in, as um, Bumblebee and Hara did defeat a lot of Nazis in, in that scene of the film, which is the World War II flashback. Um, I really wish they could add more, more, more destroyed stuff and everything, but unfortunately they did not. I'm, I'm not so sure if Studio Series Hot Rod, the um, the less class Hot Rod, had the had the Nazi symbol or more um, you know, or more um, what's it called, more details in it. If it did, please tell me in the comment section down below. And now, without further ado, let's take a look at his box. Now taking a look at um, the buzzworthy World War II um, Bumblebee backdrop, we can see that it does have some nice G1 um, Bumblebee um, um, or, um, box art right there, but unfortunately it did not come with the Studio Series, um, like the large number that of 26 and written letters of Studio Series and had Bumblebee's um, CGI art, but that is due because this is a buzz, um, but, um, from the buzz early and not from the regular Studio Series mainly. Also, it does it does come with several um, G1 Bumblebee um, arts and not the World War II Bumblebee art that came with the film with the with the figure and now taking a look at the back of the box we can see that we can see some product images of 
of Studio Series 26 Bumblebee, like the prototype images. We can see that um, with his um, accessories and we can see his alt mode. Like I said before, this is not an alt mode that we saw in the film and unfortunately Hasbro stuck with this and not the pr proper one. Now taking a look at the right here, um, it says it transforms 25 steps and his iconic movie scene is the World War II flashback where Bumblebee infiltrates an enemy stronghold, unleashing, unleashing the, the war machine within. So in that scene, Bumblebee and Hot Rod do take on a bunch of Nazis and, and will basically win the war and everything. You know how the story goes. And the last part of the box, it does have a CGI, um, the regular CGI um, art of Bumblebee. And I do like the CGI art and it makes you um, take a look at the differences between um, our the our Bumblebee figure and how he should have looked like in in his um, toy form. And now without further ado, let, let's transform this figure into his um, alternate mode. Now it is time to transform Bumblebee into his World War II tank form. Now let's get started. So the first thing you're going to have to do is separate his accessories like so. Put them to the side for now. Do the same with his little gun accessory and his hammer accessory. Then make sure all his limbs are straightened down. Make sure he looks like he's standing and everything just waiting for him to get picked and everything. Just have him standing like so. Just have him stand around right there. Um, take a look at him and everything. So the first thing you're going to have to do is bring his arms up at least, um, I believe, 90 degrees. Then fold in his hands. Do the same process to the other side. Fold in his hands. Then after that, lift this backpack part up. Separate these little flaps right here. After that, separate the wheels. And then and then his arms, please fold them like that to provide some clearance. And then after that, just make sure it is kind of difficult to get them inside um, the, like to flip them all the way around. So just simply pop them out like that. Just make sure that they pass this backpack area like that. So then after that, you're going to have to turn his arms like that, do the same process to the other side and tuck them in like this. Make sure that the, the, the fingers are folded out like that. Then this little tiny piece, you're going to have to pop it out and then flip it, flip it around. Just have it like that for now. And then after that, Bumblebee's head, you're just, and this part of this chest, you're just going to simply push it in like that. And then you're going to um, fold out his legs like this, take out the wheels. Put, push that in right there and do the same process. So fold down, take out wheels and, pu and push in. So then after that you connect them together. So you're going to connect them so that um, so that his car mode can be complete and can be more stable to transform and everything. So make sure that um, um, everything is still and everything. And then after this, this part will collapse down and then there and then this little tiny part you're just gonna have to fold out fold in like that so here you have studio series 26 deluxe class world war II bumblebee fully transformed and one thing that um does kind of bug me is it's kind of difficult to transform as the part that you do collapse down does have a tendency to take up to um to separate and everything but um and other than that, a good figure. So now about his hammer. So you're just going to flip this out like this. Now this little slot right here, as I said, I said mentioned earlier in the review, um, um, how it has a use. It's going to just tab into this little circular um, tab, peg it in there, and then just simply rotate that around. And then this stands as like a little, a little um, long gun. And then this one, just his little weapon accessory, you're just going to pop it out like now with those pieces pegged inside, um, I'm going to show you the molding between um, this version of Bumblebee and the the hot rod ver the the tank version the tank version of Bumblebee and the and the um, tank version of hot rod. So now bringing over Studio Series 50 Deluxe Class Hot Rod into the into the video. Now we can see that um, the molding between both alternate car modes are the same. Except that Hot Rod does have these little, these little um, 
this slimy old mm, um, remotes um, that are probably little pouches or boxes and Bumblebee does not, he is more sleek and looks like he has a door right there and Hot Rod um, kind of does with some new new um, um, molding right there and also one other thing that I have noticed is that um, Bo both um, weapon weapon storage is compatible, and I do recommend for hardware just leaving the the, the weapon on the inside because it looks more secure and everything than the outside because it could pop off or something. So if you want to make a stop motion, but with these cert with these exact figures, you might guess you can make ones like you know. Um. But overall, I think Bumblebee is a good figure, mostly in his robot form, except there is a lot of kibble on the back. But other than that, a pretty good figure and everything. Now, um, let's get back to the transformate for the untransformation process. So the first thing you're going to have to do is simply take off all of his weapon accessories. Just simply pop them off. Just to separate his hammer from that little that little tab that I showed you earlier, just separate them. And after that, bring up this backpack and then and then fold it in. And then after that, you're gonna have to make sure this flips out like that. I'm not so sure if that is necessary, but I I um it is to I don't know, but I recommend that you just leave it like this if you want to transform Bumblebee or Howard again, so that it can be so that it can be easier to um to just have that step already already done. So now let's um, um, continue the untransformation. So um, you're gonna get this little tab right here. You're gonna fold it back. Then you're gonna um, take out his head like that. Then you're gonna have to take this little piece down. You're gonna make sure this part collapses. Make sure it collapses down, it folds inside. And then after that, you're gonna you can um, separate his legs that were once the front part of the car, then fold in these wheels, turn these around, separate the toes, and do the same process to the other side. So do that, and you have his legs done. So it is a pretty simple um, transformation. Pop out his hands, and, okay, make sure this remains popped out, and then about the back. Um, I do recommend if you do know how to separate it, separate it because it is just uh, in the way sometimes. But also it is to cover the wheels, so um, it is okay and everything. But personally, I I would have um, transformed Bumblebee in a different way and not in this um, way that Hasbro had gave us. So just fold out his hammer like this, and then make sure like those little chubby spots I told you about. Make sure to tab out like that and then put place his weapon his other little gun right there and there so you have studio series 26 hot um the last class bumblebee fully transformed now some final thoughts i have about this figure is that it is a good figure to have on your shelf mostly in robot form but in car form i do not like the car form at all because it is not what we saw in the film and and I believe this figure, just because of the car form, has wasted much potential. And many people did not like um, World War II Hot Rod or Bumblebee. Due to the fact that they have the same mold and it is just a little too boxy around the legs, I think. Now, that concludes our Transformers Studio Series um, 26 um, Deluxe Class Bumblebee Review. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please tell me in the comment section down below. And I will see you at our next Transformers Studio Series video. Have a nice day. Goodbye.